Fox Swoosh LLC, an educational firm that empowers traders with a complete and detailed system to become profitable traders. Melissa Armo graduated magna cum laude from Gettysburg College with a BA in philosophy and a minor in Latin and political science in 1994. She was employed by several banks and brokers in Pennsylvania, Florida, Arizona, and New York as a mortgage broker for 17 years. She changed careers from banking to pursue a securities trading career in 2008. A self-taught day trader with over 10 years experience, Melissa's specialty is a trading strategy that focuses on shorting stocks that gap. Melissa also appears frequently on TV as a stock market expert. Watch Melissa on RT, uh, America, Cheddar TV, CBS, Fox News, and Fox Business Network. Uh, okay, Melissa, where are you broadcasting from today? I'm in New York City where I live, and it's a gorgeous spring day in Central Oh, really? Park. Yeah, in fact, when I'm done here today, and this is the nice thing about trading for a living, I'm gonna go outside. The first, first cherry blossoms in Central Park have started to burst. It's this cute thing that the Central Park Conservatory has where you can track where the trees are starting to blossom and it's a gorgeous of day. Of course so there's an app degrees. for that. <laughs> yeah, of course. And so I'm excited to be here, but then I'm going to go take a lovely walk in the park. So thank you for having me and welcome everyone. Exciting day to train. Of course, we had some very significant data out this morning, which the market is reacting at the moment positively to. And then, of course, NVIDIA, which is everyone's favorite, is rallying today, which is why the market's up as well. So today we're going to talk about what I do, what I trade, and again, how I make money in the market. So as John said, my name is Melissa Arma. I own my own company, which I started a long time ago now. So it feels like I've been trading forever, but I did do mortgages for a long time, and I made a lot of money doing that. And it was an unlimited income until it wasn't, and things changed. And one of the nice things, again, about trading is that you can work from home, you can live anywhere. You can trade the U.S. stock market from any country in the world. And specifically, what I focus on is not only momentum, but it's momentum and gaps. This is me. And again, if you have questions after the presentation today, you can call me at 929 gap you can email me, I'm a real person, I will answer the phone, or you can leave me a voicemail, I will call you back. You can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. And I've been putting a lot of videos on, on YouTube, uh, not just, you know, stock trading videos, The Room. I've been taking The Room, but also things about New York. I'm going to take some videos today of Cherry Blossoms in Central Park, and I'll post them on YouTube. So it's nice to know, you know, to get to know the person that you're going to go learn from. Again, I'm a real person. I live in New York City. I've been here for a long time. And one of the things, again, about trading is you can live anywhere. So I choose to live in New York. I don't have to live in New York. I have people that are all across the world right now trading. Of course, the, the time presentation for me to trade, 9.30 Eastern time, the time zone works for me. It's difficult if maybe you're very, very far away. you got to get up early, but then you can go on to another job or go back to bed, you know, do whatever you want to do. And I'm seeing the questions here as we go along. I can answer questions as I'm talking today. But getting back to what I was saying, I love what I do, okay? If you don't love what you do, you're not going to have a happy life because you're going to do what you do for a living to earn income for a long, long time, hours and hours and hours a day and years over years, okay? So you've got to love what you do because the quality of your life is going to dramatically decrease if you hate your job and you wish to pray for the weekends or for the day to end at 5, 6, 7 o'clock at night, whenever you're done. And the quality of your life increases dramatically to the better, okay? If you actually love what you do. So I feel like I have two sides of me. I have the teacher, teacher person, the teacher Melissa that teaches my class once a month, and then I have the trainer Melissa, which is like trade and live trade room. Today, for example, we shorted Boeing. We were already in puts in Boeing, and the Boeing gap down today. We've been shorting that. That was a day trade. We got it in that quick. You could still be in the puts that I called in that. But again, the whole idea and the whole point of trading is what? Is to make money. Whether you make money in five minutes or three minutes or two hours, again, I like the fast trades. And we're going to talk about some of those today as well. So again, here we are. Hard to believe it's March. <laughs> I can't even believe it. In a couple of days, it'll be St. Patty's Day. So it's a good time to reflect. It's changing seasons, especially since we're starting spring. Where are you at for the year? You know, are you where you want to be for the year with your trading? 
Or, or do you, you want, want to make, make some changes? changes you know, know? Again, again, this is, is a good time, time to reflect because, because you still have plenty of time left in the year to do a different strategy, change what you're doing, do something else. Maybe you're doing very well and you want to increase your risk. Maybe you need to back your risk off. Maybe the strategy you're doing isn't working. You know, a lot of people right now are buying dips. They're buying the dip in the market. They're buying the dips in strong stocks. Because really, since November, the market's been on a tear higher. Now, whether or not that lasts remains to be seen. Remains to be seen, particularly after Friday's failure in a gap up and the big, big sell-off that we saw just a couple of days ago. So it's been a very interesting year to trade. We've had a lot of opportunities. I put the stats in here for this year for the day trade room. I always get an average of $3,000 per trade. Again, that is trades that are day trades on margin, where I take the trade, I put it in a stop, it's a limit of our stop, it's a hard stop, I get in, get out, and if I get stopped, then I lose in the trade. I call the trades live in the room. So, so far this year, year to date, we're up 260,249. Again, I don't have the last two days in here. Actually, we did BA yesterday too. So we did BA today, we did BA yesterday as well. And then I have the options newsletter results for this year. Both of these stats are in here. I risk more for my options trades. I know you were talking about options earlier. I trade options in a very unique way where I'm just buying a call and selling it or buying the put and selling it. For example, in Boeing, I called the 185 Boeing puts. It worked. Okay, I called them actually yesterday. And the stock gap down today fell through the strike and dropped. And it's still lower. So the way that I trade options is no fancy dancy thing. I'm trading the momentum in the option in the gap. And so far we've had a good start to the year with with options as well, I'm up 675.780 for options. So total year to date, not including the last two days actually, it's almost $2 million for the year. This has been a great year. We've had a lot of opportunities. I'm going to talk about NVIDIA a little bit. Again, I know it's probably today. I'm not in NVIDIA right now. I'm waiting and seeing with NVIDIA because again, I'm not 100% about this market right now, but NVIDIA is very expensive to trade. And one of the things we're going to talk about a little bit is if you're someone that has a small account, okay, and you can't afford a margin account, trading options is a way for you to take one contract, for example, in something, and not have to worry about trading on a margin. Uh, any questions, again, you can just put them in the room there. Uh, but getting back to what I was saying, you need your brain to trade. So how do you make this much money in the market? How do you make any money in the market? How do you not lose, okay? You have to look for quality trades and you have to use your brain. Because if you're someone that's been trying to do this for a while, you've been wanting to do this, the fact is you can very easily turn on the television and all of a sudden look at something on the TV and say, oh, this person says this, this person says that, and it turns out not to be true. Same thing with the economic data. You can look at the economic data and say, wait a minute, wait a minute. And Friday we had the unemployment number, and it was bad. And the market actually made new highs or first before it fell. And I said in the trading room on Friday, when the market was up and it was first rally, I said, I don't think this is a win that everybody thinks. So the idea is that the unemployment rate could tick over 4% this calendar year 2024. It's actually a sign that we could be going into a recession. It's actually not a good thing. And obviously then the market, you know, ended up falling. There were other reasons the market fell on Friday too. But the fact is, think about what you're doing and how do you do that? Make good choices. Because you can listen to one person say one thing, another person say another thing, and come up with different conclusions all day long. Again, somebody's probably buying BA today, even though we shorted it. Somebody's buying it and it's, and it's dropping. Okay, but someone's buying it today. It's lower. So the fact is, you need to understand why you're doing it. Use your brain for what you're doing. Uh, someone's asking what's the minimum account size for your strategy. It depends if you're going to do options or day trades. If you're going to do options, you're going to put up an options account with as little as $2,000 at a retail broker, but then you need to assess your risk. I wouldn't risk more than $200 per trade. So then you're not doing a video if it costs $15 or $20 for one to be a contract. If you're going to trade on a margin, you have to have $25,000 at a retail broker. You get four to one margin, or you can go prop. At a prop account, you can probably open up a prop account with $2,500, $5,000, and then you get 10 to one. So you can go anywhere and trade anywhere you want, but the amount of money you risk per trade has to do with how many contracts you take or shares. So you can trade my strategy with any size. But in order to make the kind of money that I'm making here, you have to risk X, Y, Z amount. And I told you 3,000 for the day trades, eight for the for the options. I have some people that are risking more. And actually two people emailed me two weeks ago who did the Amazons 
the, the one guy risked over 10 grand on Amazon, it was down before it went. I said, wow, wow you really missed a lot in this. He ended up making out. We made money, money in the trade. But again, the thing is, you have to look at your risk and not only just your cash. You have to say, wait a minute, do I understand anything that's going on here? But I'm okay with this. Sometimes I call a trade, and the trade is down before it goes. Now, BA was an example yesterday. I called the BAs. BA open, dropped, fell. BA was up, then it rallied, closed near the highs okay, with the market yesterday. And then, then all of a sudden, poof, today it was up all this money because it gapped down and it was just a strike. So again, options are something that can be volatile, but that's where all the profit is. That's where all the money is. That's how we made all the money of the ones that we were in the video. And again, I know people are going along the video today. I don't think it's the right timing for that. You know, I don't think it's the right timing for that yet. And I wouldn't be surprised if it flips around, quite frankly, mainly because of the market as well. So the minimum size account is 2,000 per option, 25 per day trades, but your risk still has to depend, Joseph, on the cash that you have. I hope that answers your question. And it's how to make money in the market. Use your brain, think about what you're doing, don't risk too much money, get out when you're up, don't hold everything to a P target and have a set strategy that you use every single solitary day that has absolutely nothing to do with the market. So a lot of people right now are fat and happy and think that they're brilliant and they're making all kinds of money because the market's around and they're buying everything and then some. It's not going to last. Mark my words, it's not going to last. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised. And I'm not saying 100% conviction, but I wouldn't be surprised if the market set the high for the year on Friday in some of the indices, Friday, March 8th. I don't know. I don't know. But I wouldn't be surprised. So when the market is trending, you can go along. Lots of things. You can buy every dip and make money. When it's not, you can't. Most of the life in the market, that's not the case. So again, you have to have a strategy that you make money consistently in any market environment, in any market condition, no matter what the market's doing. And quite frankly, no matter what the stock's doing either. So again, we're on a trend trading. I'm looking at the gap, which we're going to talk about a little bit here, but I'm not looking at the market and saying, let's go along this, let's short this, let's buy the dip. I'm looking at something and saying, who's in control of what's going on right now? Who's in control of BA? The bears. The bears are in control. It's selling up. So again, it's determining the control factor. It doesn't matter what the market's doing. It doesn't matter really the reason. Again, it could be a fundamentals. It could be a plane crash. It could be earnings. It could be whatever. Okay. It has to do with the control factor of who's controlling the stock. Oh, here's the Amazon. I was just talking about this. So this was the Amazon gap. Stock closer gapped up, rally. We went long Amazon. So who is in control of Amazon? The bulls. The bulls are still in control of Amazon. I didn't look at this today. It doesn't matter. I know the bulls are still in control of this stock. Okay. Here was another one we did, Marvell. We did this one on Friday the 8th. Shorted it. Stock closer gapped down, open, fell. I did this as a day trade that I did not put on Friday. I didn't get this all the way down. Again, Again, someone asked me in the other webinar I did last week and said, well, do 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 are these the best exits when you show the results? No, I don't always get the best exit. Absolutely, absolutely not. In fact, we went along eBay and it just kept going and going after I got out of it. That was a call. We did calls on eBay. It just kept going. This kept going after I got out of this. Your objective is to make money. Your objective is to have more winners than losers. Your objective is not to hold everything to the best price that you can get out of it because you're going to fail. If, if that's, that's your objective. objective. It's, it's impossible, impossible to do that. that. What, what you can do, and what is not possible, is predicting that Marvell will fall, that the control is to the downside on this particular day, and then you can short it and make money. And again, if you're trading and you want to short a thousand shares and it drops a dollar, what is that? You're up a thousand bucks. Again, same thing if you want to buy 10 contracts, which is essentially a thousand shares, drops a dollar, you'll be up whatever you're up, depending on how fast it goes. Could be 80 cents, could be a dollar. Sometimes options don't move exactly penny for penny like a day trade. But anyways, getting back to what I was saying, you need a focus. And my focus is what? It's gas. So for those of you that have never heard of a gap before, what is a gap? A stock gap from the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. So everything closes at 4 o'clock Eastern time. Everything opens the next day at 9.30. Weekends, the market is closed. Okay, so in between there, trading goes off. Here was another one we did. This is Roku. This was a bit ago, back in the middle of February. Stock closed here, gap down. Closed up here around 94 and change, gap down in the morning. And open around 77 and change. So who was in control of the Roku? The bears. So you would have shorted this. We shorted it. You could have bought a put. 
I didn't, I didn't do a protest, protest but, but you could have. And, and then, then guess, guess what? what? Fell again. Boom. Boom. So, so this is what happened here. The bears took control of it, and they sold it, and they dumped it, or they shorted it, or both. Okay, the nice thing about shorting, and what I like to focus on shorting is you get moved to the downside. Quick, fast, and big, you get panic. I will say one thing. It's very rare to get something called panic buying. You did see that in NVIDIA. You saw that in NVIDIA a couple of weeks ago when everyone thought NVIDIA was done and it couldn't keep going, and then it did, and people were shorting NVIDIA, and they got rolled over, and they lost. Okay, NVIDIA wasn't done, and then it ran up again. Long story short, panic buying happened in NVIDIA. That is very rare. Usually you have panic is selling, okay, okay which, which is why I prefer to short. So I have an issue that I'd like to short. Is that behind you shorting and making money shorting in a, in a market that's trending higher and making new highs? Because I'm focused on this particular stock and I'm focused on the control. And yeah, I do go along. We went along. Like I said in the video, we did the video options. But the fact is, it's so much easier to make money so, so quickly doing shorts, okay? And so I made an issue doing that. Also, I find that many traders prefer to go long. They don't, don't understand shorts. shorts. So, so again, if you understand what's really happening in a short, okay, you can make a lot of money and you can make it fast. And again, we're shorting and we're shorting the selling. Now, how do I do it? How do I figure it out? How do I make the prediction? How do I see where the control is sided? Again, to the upside and the downside, I use a rating system. It's a checklist. It's a 26-point checklist. This is what I teach in my class, which I teach once a month. So I teach people the checklist. You can do it yourself. Someone asked me the other day, do you hold anything back? No, I don't. I teach you in the class how to do it yourself. The fact that I've been doing this again for a very long time, since 2008, the benefit of trading with me in the live room is if I have two things, one that reached 22 points and another one that reached 22 points, I can narrow it down to the one that's going to be the better of the two. Or sometimes I see where something's going to have a bigger target, like VA, like, like, like I said yesterday in the room. So, that's the benefit of trading with me. It's a sixth sense and it's an intuition. One of the biggest mistakes that I think traders make is they're jumping around from thing to thing to thing. I think um, weeks like this and webinars like this are good for presentations for people to come, listen to a lot of people, and then grab onto something that you think makes sense to you and then you, and then you run with it. Because when you're trying to do too many things all at once, you never get good at anything. And, and that is the biggest mistake that traders make. When I started trading, I made a lot of money first in a short, and it was also in a gap. And then I said, there's something to this, and I want to do it. And then I decided to focus on that. I never spent my career jumping around from futures to options to day trades to swing trades to forex to Bitcoin. I never did that. You waste a lot of time doing that. And again, one of the benefits of coming to presentations like this, the seminar this whole week is that you listen to lots of people. And then you hear a little bit about this, and a little bit about this, and a little bit about that. And then it allows you to say, wait a minute, I think there's something here that makes sense with this thing. And then you've got to run with it. Because if you don't, you're going to be all over the place. You've got to kind of throw yourself into whatever strategy you want to do. Because the key is to get good at it. Now, you've got to have something that works. That's obvious no matter what. But you still have to get good at what you're doing. And part of it also is connecting with the person, connecting with the teacher, connecting with the mentor, if it's someone that you can relate to, if, 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 if you understand what the person is saying. But anyways, the rating system helps me determine who is in control. It's like, use my brain to rate the gap in the morning, it could be 6 a.m., it could be 7 a.m. I try to do things early. I can rate stocks at night. Oracle was a gap up last night after hours. I didn't rate it, I saw it, we did not play Oracle. That's another reason the market was up today too. But again, this is all done, everything, before the market even opens. I know if I like something, I know if I don't like something, or if I want to do it or not. Now, here is a BA chart. This isn't today's, but this was back from actually just Friday. Hard to believe now where BA is at. This was Friday's close of BA. Was there, no, this was 1.30 in the afternoon. It was around 1.98 and change. You can pull it up and look where it is right now in the 80s. Anyways, I did a trade in this before that. On a 2.9, I called the BA 205. It expired 2.23. Let's look 2.9. Here was the BA. So we were short here. So we bought the puts, put the drop, boom. And again, it's a good trade. Cost was 250. Advanced trader risk. Again, I'm risking around 8,000, 8,750. Bought it, sold it, done, out, boom. 
Again, you put the order in to put a sell order. You don't even have to watch it if you don't want to, but I do targets in the letter. Four contacts for a thousand risk. This is a good way. Whoever's asking about the minimums, you could take a five thousand dollar account, for example, for six or seven, risk a thousand dollars, and you see how you can really add on your account. You can make twenty percent of your account in one trade like this. This is a nice trade. This is not what I would consider a big trade. Okay, this is just a trade that we did that went and worked. Okay. And if you have to think of it as, you know, you do it, get out, do it, get out, chunk it out. You're trying to make money as many, every time you're in a trade, you're up, and you have, a tr you have the risk on. Could be a day trade, could be an option. Again, could be an option, you're holding overnight. That money's being sucked up that you have in the risk plus the profit if you're up till you get out. You know what I mean? So if you're in a trade and you have $1,000 and it costs you 1000 to take it, you got to really believe that trade's going to keep going. Because really, you have two thousand dollars at risk. The thousand profit plus the thousand that you risked in the trade. And if you would book it, you would have two thousand dollars back in your account. And that's really how you have to look at it. Again, it's taking it and getting out. Taking another good trade, then getting out. That's active trading. Again, this is I'm not swing trading. I'm, this is active trading. Even the options I'm doing in the weeklies. Okay, I'm not doing the daily expirations. I don't think those make any sense. Um, even if I think something's going to move in the day. I don't do this. I always do the Fridays. And it's getting my, back to what I was saying about the fundamentals. You know, I'm go, I was invited to go to some lecture by a bank actually Friday I'm going to about um, what's happening with real estate and, and interest rates. We're still in a very high interest rate environment. And you look at you say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, they said they were going to lower rates. Now, someone I heard on Bloomberg this morning said, no, 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 they may not lower rates at all this year. Well, that's really going to wreak havoc on the market if it turns out to be true. That will, that will really actually create a sell-off in the market. Because the market's expecting the Fed to lower rates this year. I don't think it's going to be as much as they say. I don't know if they will at all, but the market will react if they don't. You can't rely on the economic data or even the fundamentals to make decisions. Very many times you have, and again, I don't know what Oracle said, but you can have good data and the, market, and the stock falls. You can have bad data and the stock rallies. You say, well, sometimes it doesn't make sense. And they've been revising the data as well. And, and so that's been a, become a problem too. And then you say, wait a minute, can I even rely on what's going on here? That this is actually going to happen. And that can play havoc and wreak havoc on your long-term portfolio if you're trying to make decisions what to do, especially with your retirement account. You think the market's going to keep going, and then what if it happens and it doesn't all of a sudden? Now, when we're talking about gas, let's look at another one here, P-A-N-W. Stock close to your gap down. Again, this was expensive. We did a day trade in this, shorted it, got in, got out. This is, this is a big move. It was 54.60 was a profit in this, I wish 37.20. I, I only took 600 shares. It was expensive. The stock was big, but it had a big move consistent with the price of the stock. So this is, you know, all relative, but it was a nice gap. Stock closed here at 4 o'clock, open in the morning, down here at 9.30. I rated it. I said, wait a minute, who's in control today of the PANW? Is it going to flip? Rally? I said, no, it's going to drop. We shorted it for the drop. This was 221. That was our nice. Here's a beginner risk or smaller risk, 1,200. Again, you have to have a margin account to do this, or you could have bought a put. I didn't do a put in this, but you could have done a put in this if you didn't have a margin account. And again, you could have made 1820, we're seeing 1240, that's a good train. How do I figure it all out? I rate the gap. I get up in the morning and I rate it, and I never, ever, ever skip around, okay? It's all about figuring out where's the stock going to go in the day. I plopped this in here. Again, I don't know where BA is right now because I'm talking to you, but right before I came on, I put the chart in here. You can see what we did. So yesterday, stock closed here, gap down, open, dropped. Stock closed here, gap down, open, fell. And again, I called yesterday. Actually, I called a couple of BAs. So we'll see where this goes different strengths and different dates. Again, I don't know where this is, but this has nothing to do with the market. This is completely on its own. And again, that's what you really want. Because if you're trying to predict what the market's going to do on any given day, I mean, good luck. I'm good at reading the market. Sometimes I rate the market. Sometimes I play the market. I'm not in the market right now. When I say the market, I'm going to keep the cues of the spy. 
but, but honestly, honestly, I don't, I don't get the, the market, market right all the time. time. We were shorting the market at a certain point last year. Then we stopped. Then the market started having a leg up. Then it continued. Then it made new highs. I think I've done one or two trades in the market this year, if that. And then I've just laid off of it. Again, people the market keeps going. People keep buying every dip. At some point, again, it's all going to come together and it may not play out the way that people think. You're starting to see the signs of that now, even with the discussions and even with the data, like I said. I, I, don't, I don't think having a, well, you know, an unemployment rate that ticked up last week and probably will hit over 4% this year, I don't think it's a win for the economy. I just don't see it that way. So we'll have to see how the market sees it. But you weigh the pros and cons every time you take a trade. Every time you got to put the odds in your favor. That's what you're trying to do. And again, you can day trade options. You can take options and hold them. I'm doing the weeklies. Ideally, I want to trade to go in 24 to 48 hours if I do an option, but it could be a couple of days. Again, VA worked out well. We took it yesterday. You could get out of it today. You could still be in it. You know what I mean? So again, day trades, though, I'm in and out in a couple of minutes. Um, Thomas, my name is Melissa Armay. I'm a stock swoosh. But thank you for asking. Uh, here was the Tesla. Here was another one we did. Tesla, I called on 220, the 190s. This was tight. This is, I called it on Tuesday to expire on the Friday. It worked. These were cheap, though. These were really, really cheap. A dollar seventy-five six contracts cost ten fifty. Again, one hundred twenty-nine percent. Let's see where this went. I called the one ninety two twenty. This was back here. Oh, here was this. Stop close here. Gap down. Open and dropped. Take it over. See? So again, sometimes I'll call it above the strike where the strike is the target. Actually, that was the case yesterday where I said the one eighty-five. And sometimes I call it at the money. And then you have to look at the targets in the letter where I'm going to get it down. Again, that was another short. That was Tesla. Any questions here so far? So as I was saying, though, again, you know, I did a job I wasn't happy with for the last couple of years that I did mortgages. When I started my job, I liked it. I was making a lot of money. Things were great. But then stuff changed. It had nothing to do with me. It had nothing to do with me at all. And it may be the case for you. Sometimes things change. You know, people are working from home now, so they have time to trade on the side. And they can, and they have the ability to do it. People are working from home, but it doesn't necessarily mean that they're making any more money or working less hours. You know, some people are actually working more hours with the work from home thing, quite frankly. So the idea of becoming successful and working for yourself is very inviting for a lot of people. But you have to have a plan of action to make it happen. And again, if you're bit by the market bug and you want to do this, and you're someone that's very independent-minded and thinking, you can do it. You may have goals for yourself that you want to make this much money a week, this much money a month, but you've got to start somewhere. You're not going to make any money if you don't know what to do. And if you don't have a successful strategy, you're going to lose. So then you're going to get really upset, frustrated, and quit. You don't want to feel like that. It's not impossible to do it. I'm teaching people that are brand new, total beginners, never traded in their life, and some people have been traded, trading longer than I'm alive, quite frankly, who have just been looking to train and don't have a strategy, and they need something to do. Um, Michael's question, curious, when you're following an option play, what are the time frame of charts daily? The daily. Easy question. And again, I'm rating the gap in the daily. The daily chart. If someone said, Melissa, you can only trade today using one chart from now until the rest of your life, it would be the daily chart. Every single thing you can get off the daily. The entry, the exits, the targets, the entry, the rating on the daily. Got to have the daily chart up. That's all that matters. When I'm holding it down, which I'm going to show you here some day trades we did a little bit last week, that's just because I'm trying to minutia it down to maximize my size in my in my day trades. Anthony's asking about percentage of winners versus losers. I had the stats at the beginning go back. We're averaging this year, again, it changes, it varies week from week, around 72% for the day trades and about 75% for options so far. So again, say if you're taking 10 trades, you have to figure seven are going to work, three could lose. Okay. And the losses are in there in the stats. Um, anything else? Anyways, all you need is one strategy and one focus. And how do you do that? You've got to figure it out. What makes sense? To me, gaps make sense because they have big moves. 
And when, and when I, started I started trading, my risk was only $150 a trade. trade. So, so I wanted to do something where it was going to have a big move. Because I, I know if I took a thousand shares of something and shorted it and it dropped two dollars, I could make two grand. Otherwise, I'd need to take two thousand shares of something or five thousand shares of something and scalp it to get 25, 30 cents. You know, so it was it was it just made sense to me to do something that moved big. And when I started looking at gaps and analyzing gaps, I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. When I look at the chart, gaps move big. And then that's how I kind of gravitated to it. And again, I gravitated short because they go quickly. So anyways, why gaps? Gaps are the most powerful show of price action in a chart. And that, you can believe, is not about the Fed or wondering what they're going to do or what anybody says on TV. You know, and everybody knows, when we pull up our live data feed, we're pretty much going to get the same price. We can see where is trading right now. Gaps have large moves. Gaps can move up or gaps can move down. Some of the biggest momentum moves are in a daily chart come from a gap. Again, this is the Marvell. This was a big move. I did not hold this all the way down. I also didn't do a put in it. I, I could have. I didn't. We already had enough things on it. I didn't want to go into the weekend with something new. But this, this you could have bought a put in it, and it dropped. But getting back to why, what makes it? Power money. Power money is what moves stocks. Power money is in charge. It's in charge of the stock's direction. And trends are set and move with the power money people, which was a lot in the market. The other thing I want to I just thought of this too. There, the New York Community Bank almost went under in the last two weeks. I don't know if I'm sure some of you saw that. There's, I mean, another bank, another regional bank could go under this year. That's not crazy. It almost actually happened. And again, if Steve Mnuchin hadn't bailed out of that bank, which is probably a good deal for him, there's, there's something else to that story which I can read the details of. Again, New York real estate has taken a hit, okay? It's going to come back. New York is a great investment long-term for anyone anywhere. But I, I have a feeling that a lot of those loans are commercial properties, or commercial loans where they, where they had the real estate, and so they ended up buying into that community bank. But if they hadn't, that bank would have gone under. That would have wreaked havoc in the market in the last few weeks. And the financials as well. So that's another thing that's just like kind of moving out there. The longer that they continue not to lower rates, they're not upping rates, but they haven't lowered them. And with all the money that's invested in these long-term bonds that banks have it, and again, this is the longer rates stay out long higher, the worse it is for banks, particularly regional banks that don't have the capital, who are holding on to these long-term bonds. So it's just, you know, it's you've got to learn how to short. I mean, if you don't know how to short, you're going to miss out when the sell-off comes, or even days when you have the sell-off. Again, VA is just one example of that today in one particular stock, which happens to be a good one, but there will be a time for the market as well. But if you think about it logically, you're like, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who is in control? If you get and understand who's in control, then, then the idea of making money doesn't sound crazy to you. It's, if you trade on the side of the control, you say, wait a minute, wait a minute, then I can make money doing this, and then it can be easy for me. But you have to understand and pick and choose the right things to do, because it's not about doing everything. Again, even though the market's rallying and making you highs, you can't go along everything and make money. But again, people don't understand that. So when you think about it, the control, the control, trade on the side of the control, then you can wrap your head around doing it. And I think a lot of times people have these ideas in their head. They want to make 100 grand a year. They want to make 200 grand a year. They want to make this. They want to make that. Listen, if you're losing, make $500 a week. <laughs> make $100 a week. I mean, just start small. Because if you're losing, anything that you make in the next five days or even tomorrow is good. Because you've got to turn the negativity around if you haven't been successful. And remember, training isn't gambling. You know, my training room is closed off where people can't chitter chatter in the room. I'm in control, I run the room, I'm the boss, I'm in charge. When we're training, we're focused, we're making money, we're in and out, and we're done. Training isn't gambling. You can say, well, this is fun, it's fun to do and talk to people and stuff like that. That's for different forms and other things. When you're training, you're risking your money. You can't look at it like a 50-50 crapshoot. Go to Atlantic City, go to Las Vegas, have a good time, go out for a nice meal. Because when you're taking a trade, you have to believe that that trade's going to work. And again, I'm on NVIDIA. You know how I look at it right now? It's a 50-50 crash shoot. I don't know if it's higher, if it's going to tick up and go over the highs, or if it's going to fall tomorrow and tank. I'm waiting on that. I'm waiting for the confirmation. The confirmation. And how do I know? I'll know it when I see it. But it wasn't today. So theoretically, yes, you could have gone on NVIDIA today. Do I think it was a good trade? No. Even if you're up. But the, the fact, fact is, you have to look at things and say, wait a minute, 
I've, I've got, got to see this thing, thing, this thing, this thing, this thing, thing, this thing, and then, and then if I see them, them then I do it. it. Okay. Because if, if you're 50-50, then the answer, the answer is no. Don't do the trade. Okay. okay. Anyways, what, what am I teaching the class? The checklist, the 26 points. That's the meat and potatoes. What I do when I make the decisions, whether I want to short BA or not even do it at all. Um, and again, that's how I know the direction the stock's going to go. I'm looking for the momentum. I want to have a big move. And again, the whole benefit of training is to have the fast trades in the morning, which I like to do. It's about working really smarter, not harder. Because again, I spent a lifetime of a career doing mortgages where I was working seven days a week. And I was working more than 50 hours. I don't want to do it anymore. You know, you just get to a point where you say, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, the idea of making a couple thousand dollars in a couple of minutes is great, it's good. And then I'm making the bigger moves in the options, which I'm holding overnight. So a big flow of money going in a certain direction is what moves the market stocks and creates momentum and sets the trend in charts. I'm looking for the institutional money. I'm looking for the side of power. And that's who's in charge of the stock and the markets at all times. This was last week's trades, which I'm going to quickly go over. These are only the day trades, not the options. We did deputy day on Monday. We did target twice. I took a stop, but I really took it. JWMB day, which was a short. This is Nordstrom. CM is a short. I'm Marvell. And I'm going to quickly show you. So again, with an average risk of $3,000, you could have made $21,380 last week. We had one loser. This was W day. Stock close here. Gap down. Open and drop. We shorted it. Again, this is a day trade. You would have had to have a margin account. I call this trade live in the room. Again, you could have held it longer. It came all the way down. You could have bought a put. It fell. But we did that on Monday. Then we did target. I stopped. Uh, the first trade was a stop. This was a long because it was actually a good gap. That was on Tuesday. Then we did it again. Then we did the ad, then it worked, and then I had a really good move in this with the ad. That was on Tuesday. JWN, I got out of early. 18 was my target, 6 cents from the target out. That kept going. I could have made more of this. Went all the way down to 17.50. That was Wednesday. Then Thursday, I did CN. This was crazy, but it worked. Stop closer, gapped up, rallied, we shorted it, got the drop. This kept going. This came all the way down to 51. We had a good exit on this before it bounced. Um, this was a good profit on that, too. And then I did the Marvell, which I got out at 78, 75, which is funny because it came all the way down. I came all the way down here and sold off in the market, but I hate to trade all day Friday, but I could have made a heck of a lot more in this, but that was a good trade, too. Do you have a set pool of stocks on your watch list that you follow? No. Is there a method or scanner or news that directs you to a particular stock to follow? No. I just look at what's gapping. Is there a method you use to find the gaps? Yes, the 26 points that I teach in the class that I go through manually when I look at the chart. After I find a list of stocks that are gapping, then I rate them. But do I trade the same thing every day or look at the same bucket? No. I just showed you everything here. Everything here is different. Completely different stocks. Tomorrow I'll get up and do something else. The only reason I did BA today and yesterday was, quite frankly, we're at the tail end of earnings season. I could have gone long Oracle today, but I said, eh. Uh, and I wasn't crazy about the market today either. And I really wasn't crazy about Oracle. But I, I tend to go to the short side first anyways. And I saw BA. But we did BA two days in a row. Why? Because there wasn't a lot to look at. We're at the end of earnings season. Actually, somebody mentioned KSS in the room. I like BA better. I don't know if KSS worked or not. BA was my top watch today. But for the most part, no. I look at a different thing every day. I have no idea what we're going to do tomorrow or the next day or the next day. But we're at the end of earnings season. So it's... Earnings season is the busiest time to trade and the busiest time to get gaps, and that starts in April. The end of earnings season is retailers. That's why we saw Nordstrom. That's why we saw Kohl's this morning, you know. So, again, and Target, Target, which was last week. So there's something I'm sure we're going to have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but it's not like I'm spending hours reading things, no. And I don't look at the same things every day. But I have something that's on my watch list. Like, NVIDIA was my watch. I said, we're going to get it, we're going to get it, we're going to get it. And we played it, played it, played it, played it, played it. Friday morning, we were in calls. I said, everybody, get out of this today. And it was over on Friday. I mean, that was it. The, pfft, it was done, you know. It ran up to 975. I had called 900 calls in that. It was an insane trade. But it was very, very expensive. It's very, very expensive. If you have a small account, you couldn't have done that trade. So it's an active letter, the options newsletter. If you don't do every trade, it doesn't matter because I'm calling so many trades. But that was, that was something where I happened to watch NVIDIA. But do I watch NVIDIA every day? No. And we didn't do it today. So I look at something different every day because I look at something different that's gapping. And I never know. 
And again, we're getting into next two weeks, whatever we get, then we have the Easter holiday, then we come back and then poof, earnings season starts, it's April, and then it's gonna be busy trading, spring trading. Then the Fed's gonna have another meeting and they're gonna talk more and we'll see where we go. And you're gonna have a lot of volatility in the market, particularly, either way, there's people that are short the market right now, I'm not, that think it's lower, especially after Friday. Then there's people that are going along the market or think the market's higher, they're buying the dip today. That's not 100% either. So again, we're gonna see increased volatility here. I mean, it could be even before Easter, actually, in the queues in the SPY. Anyways, the name of the game, though, is chunk it. Chunk it out. And how do I use this method? I use the rating system. So it's all in the daily chart. But the key to getting big trades is momentum. When I trade, I'm looking for momentum. This gives me an edge, and will give you an edge. Momentum trading is one of the most profitable and fastest ways to make money trading. Again, you could have had one contract and made great money in the BAs. But if you had a way more, you, you see what I'm saying? So you make more money when you add size, but you can't add size if you don't know what you're doing. Even if you had $500,000 in an account, it doesn't mean you're going to make a lot of money. If you don't know what to do, you can lose 500000 You know how many stories I've heard from people over the years that I've, since I've had the stock switch business and I've been teaching people? Somebody told me a story. This was like January. Somebody told me they lost seven hundred grand last year. I, I, I said, oh, my God, that's insanity. When, when, well, why wouldn't you stop? You know, like, it, you, you have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, wait a minute, I don't know what I'm doing. And you know what? There's no shame in that. You say, I have to do something different. And again, change in seasons is a good time to do that. You need your money to trade, whether it's small, medium, or large. People think they need a lot of money in order to be successful. No, you can have a small account and build it up and be successful because there are people that lose a lot of money and have a lot of money and don't know what they're doing and then they're working to fund their trading account losses. That's crazy. That's crazy. It's just ridiculous. If you know what to do, you can make money with small, medium, or large risk. And again, you got the rest of the year. You know, you got plenty of time, plenty of trades, plenty of things to do. These enormous moves happen in one direction and happen fast. Momentum trading can be very profitable. But again, what creates the momentum in the gap? It's buying or selling of institutional money. Gaps happen in the market on a regular basis. However, some gaps are nothing gaps. I don't necessarily trade every gap in the direction of the gap. Again, like I said, NVIDIA gapped up today. We didn't go long. It. So I have to read it. Understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market will help you to know what to do and when it changes the current. So there's no second guessing. If it rates 20 points or more, I'm taking it in the direction of the gap. If it doesn't, I'm not. That's the rule. If it's 15, 16, no. I don't have to second guess myself. I go with the rating. I got to get the setup. I wait for the setup. I get the setup into the open. I take it. If I don't get the setup, I don't do it even if it rates good. Okay. And then you don't have to second guess yourself. Then you're not trading on the fly. Then you're not listening to what you know they're saying on Bloomberg or whatever. Because the fact is, again, you're not gonna get 100% confirmation with anything with that. And some trades will win, some will lose. And in the end, you're gonna lose. You need to have more winners than losers. Uh, do I just follow the price action? Yes, yes I do. No, I don't have all these indicators. No, I don't, no. If I took everything off and just, well, actually, if I, I could trade and read the tape. Actually, when I used to go to Fox News all the time, which I'm doing the Skype hits now, but when I used to go to the green room, I didn't have I didn't have my charts with me, and I would have to go on, and they'd throw me a topic, and I'd have to talk about the market, and I was just reading where the market was trading at. I had no charts. I didn't have my computer with me in the green room, and I had to say, okay, well, I see where we're at now based on this, blah, blah, blah. Take everything off. Just do an experiment. Whoever asked that, Michael, get rid of every indicator you have except for price, which you could have. I use candlesticks. I use Japanese candlesticks. You could use lines. I like candlesticks because they're easier on my eyes because they're filled with greens and reds. And then I have the white background. But take everything off and see if you can trade. If you don't, that's problem number one because you're relying too much on these other things. If there was one indicator that gave you all the answers or any system that you could buy that you could just plug into a computer and go boink, then everybody would be rich. Everyone would buy it. It would cost too much money. No one could afford it. That's just, it's just not realistic. Remember what I had earlier at the beginning? Use your brain. You need your brain. What's wrong with that? 
That's actually fabulous. That means if you use your brain and you have a great brain, guess what? You're gonna make more money than some guy that doesn't use his brain, that's relying on indicators on a computer that he doesn't even know what they mean and couldn't explain on TV if they asked him what to explain it. If you know that you can use your brain to think things through and actually make good decisions, then you know you can have a leg up on the other guy. And that's good, okay? Using your brain is good. Shouldn't be something that people get upset. Oh my God, I have to use my brain. <laughs> no, you want to use your brain. And that's why you want to keep yourself healthy. You know, I eat breakfast every day before I trade. I have at least eight hours of sleep every night. I exercise. All these things help you. Now, can you do this if you're a beginner? Yes, like I said, I've taught people. If you're new and you have to learn how to do the, you know, the platform thing, how to set it up, the broker will show you. They should show you for free. Do the trainings, watch the videos, whatever. But, you know, I'm going to teach you the strategy, but you don't have any bad habits if you're a beginner. The problem is if you're doing this for a long time, sometimes you may have bad habits and you have to get over those bad habits then. So it's, you know, everybody starts out fresh and new with me. With it. They don't know what I know about gaps, so everybody's coming in the same way. You know, people that have been doing this a long time, they have other issues, even though they know how to place the trade and exit the trade and put the stops in. Now, this was one the video we did. It was back last, last Monday. Seems like a hard to believe now. We did the 860 strikes. And again, I didn't hold this trade. To think that I could have held this trade, we bought the 860 strikes in the video on Monday. I got out of it way before Friday. The trade was up, but the stock went to 975 on Friday. That's not this where I got out. But again, it, it was one trade. It was good. It was a good trade. Out. $14 for one contract. That was still expensive. $1,800 was the profit. But let's look here on the chart here on the fourth. Here. So anyways, I got it out of this here. But look where it went. So again, it was a good trade. And actually, this was down slightly until it popped up here. But I did not hold that until the last day. That would have been the best, best exit. It wouldn't have made sense. It wouldn't have made sense to me. Again, to hold until the last day, it, 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 you know, you're taking a chance the whole trade could go against you. But again, I'm trading momentum. I do focus on shorting. Why? Because fear and panic, shorting into the fear and panic can be very profitable. And again, it gives me an edge because a lot of people don't short, don't tend to short. And again, the fact that the market's rallying has nothing to do with anything at all. BA is just one example, but I gave you other ones in here too. But every day I'm looking for stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Big moves on the day, early confirmation of the bias and the move between 9.30 and 10 and precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward which is what I want, but it's the 26 point checklist. A checklist is a plan of action. And everyone that puts money into the market should have a plan of action, a checklist. On a professional level, all high income career field specialists have checklists, whether you're an accountant, we're in accounting season right now. You're doing your tax return. You have to have a checklist that you go through all the steps. If you're going to the doctor, if you're a nurse, if you're having surgery, anything like this, you should take it seriously enough that you go through something and make sure everything lines up. It should not be a 50-50 crapshoot. Having a checklist forces you to look at what you should be looking at in a chart and a stock to make the correct decision. And having a checklist as helps assist you with directional bias. Having a checklist keeps you on track to reach your goals. And setting realistic goals also helps you too because you just you don't wanna waste time trading without getting anywhere. And again, I've, I've had the business teaching people for a long time. I have people following me since I started the business that still have not signed up. They may follow me forever. They'll probably follow me until I retire or decide I don't want to do this anymore. But, you know, I think if you really want to do this and you want to take it seriously, you have all the opportunity in the world to learn from me, to train. The opportunities are there in the market. And it's motivating to do something new. And you say, this is exciting. I'm motivated to do it. Yes, it, it means using your brain. Yes, it means it costs you money to do it. Yes, it's a weekend out of your life that you're going to take the time and investment in doing it for yourself. But you're doing something to better yourself. It's like if you're going on a diet or you're starting an exercise program or if you're starting a new job. And that's how you have to look at it. Something that's exciting, not like it's work. Something that is going to help you, help you evolve in life, help you get somewhere. Where six months from now, 12 months from now, you're going to be at a better place in life. That's, that's, what's, that's what you want. 
That's the whole point. Anyway, so Golden Gap course is the class that I teach. It's a strategy on how to trade gaps. The course teaches a 26-point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches you how to play the stock on the day. The course teaches you chart analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. This is a great quote from Warren Buffett. There's one investment that supersedes all others. Invest in yourself. The time and energy and money that you spend in yourself and your training can pay off. If you get to the point where you're feeling worn down that you don't want to do that anymore, that's the time you should take a step back and just take a break from trading. Because you're not going to become successful if you're not willing to put the time, energy, and money into trading. Far too many people want to do it. It's too great of a career. The whole idea that you can make this kind of money, millions of dollars a year, hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, trade in five minutes and be done and make several thousand dollars. The fact that... And so many people want to do that. I have a lot of friends that come and say, you know, they, you know, want to experience my lifestyle. Okay, well, then you got to do it. Then you got to learn it. Then you got to do it. Well, well, then you don't really want it. You know, you have to put the work into it. And it's not something like it has to take you forever. It's something that you can do. And again, it should be exciting to you to do it, to change your life and do something new. And you also need to get value out of your education because if you're wasting your time with something that isn't working and you've been doing it for a while, you got to be honest with yourself and say, this strategy isn't working for me and then do something different. So the system I use to find the right gap each day is the 26 points. This is what you'll learn in the class and it's about empowering yourself to do it because you are the one that's in charge of your own life, you and only you. Even when you come to the room, I'm calling the trains, but you have to take the trade yourself. You have to get in, you have to get out, and you have to size yourself right too. And it's a complete system. Again, you will learn the entries, the exits, the targets, and the rating system in the class. So the class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. It's this weekend for March. And the next class isn't until the end of April. It's Easter and spring break and lots of things going on. So I'm doing the class mid-March. It's Saturday and Sunday, March 16th, 17th. Class tuition is $69.99 and I'm doing a combo special which includes the trends and the golden gap, which is three days of classes for $74.99, classes online. And then I'm doing a special. It's the 40th anniversary of Murder, She Wrote, which is actually my favorite, favorite show. As a backstory to this, when I first started trading, and I started doing well. Murder, She Wrote was always on in the morning. And I remember, I was calling my mom and saying, oh my God, Murder, She Wrote's on. I'm gonna make a lot of money today. And I did. And I started to think that Murder, She Wrote was like almost good luck. And so I love the episodes. And it actually ran for 12 years and it's the 40th anniversary. So I'm doing a special this week through Friday for this class. If you sign up for the Golden Gap Course Combo, the training room is free through the end of the year. The options newsletter is free through the end of the year. The market report subscription is free through the end of the year. And the Gap Options course is free, which is Thursday, the 21st. So then you do four classes. This ends Friday. And again, if you're interested, email me at melissa at thestockswish.com to sign up. I think I'm actually ending on time, even though I started a little bit late. Any questions from anyone? Hello, is anyone there? Thank you, Kate. Thanks, Melissa. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Have a great weekend.